This is Bustin' Loose in Faith with none other than Apostle Dudley Tebow and Prophetess Lisa Tebow. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a broadcast that brings you word and encouragement for your soul. We want you to remember that you don't have no worries. All you need is faith in God. Bustin' Loose in Faith airs Tuesdays and Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time. Now, without further ado, let's get into this broadcast. And may God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good and worthy to be praised. Just before we go into the holiday in prayer, holiday, we just want to apologize. And because of technical difficulties, we, we finally connected. Amen. God is good and gave us favor. Amen. So we just ask that you pray for us and with us. Hallelujah, that the signal will, will, will hold for us to do this broadcast through the Internet. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, precious Father, as we approach the throne of grace, we come to you humbling ourselves. I need that mighty hand today, just a thanking you and a praising you for who you are, that you are God, and besides thee, there is no other to worship in spirit and in truth. Oh, precious Father, we are so grateful and thankful to be here in the land of the living. We are so grateful and thankful to be on top of the ground, the ground not on top of us. We are so grateful and thankful as we get out of the way that you may have your way here today. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit just to come on in. Like a rushing mighty wind, lead God, direct and ordain our footsteps here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I should have had us behind Calvary's cross. Anoint these lips of clay, Lord. Use us for thy glory. In the name of Jesus, uh, we are so grateful and thankful here today in the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask you to prepare the people's heart to receive thy word in spirit and in truth. We bind up all technical difficulties, anything that will try to hinder this word, the word of God from going forth. As we lift up the name of Jesus, uh, oh, precious Father, have your way prepare people's heart. Oh, hallelujah. Meet each and every need here this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, God is good and worthy to be praised. This is Apostle Dudley Tebow. The Father is Lisa Tebow. Coming to you today in that name that's above every other name, and that is the name of Jesus. If you, if you have your Bible, amen, I would like you to go to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 25, and we're going to be looking at verse, starting with verse 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, starting with verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he had, he gave five talents to another two and to another one, to every man according to his own ability and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents, went and tread with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one, went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servant cometh and reckon with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rulers over many things. Enter thou into the jar of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came 
and said, Lord, thy deliverance unto me. Two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Into thou, into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. We are reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not shrewed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is down. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thy wicked and soulful servant, thy newest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not shrewed. Thy orders, therefore, to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming, I should have received my own with interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Just for these next few minutes, I want you to pray for us and with us as we bring forth the word today. We thank God for Matthew 25, verse 14 through 29. That is the word of God for the people of God. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. We want to talk about today, God expects a return on his investment. God expects a return on his investment. God expects a return on his investment. And stewardship is the way God gets such a return. I'm going to say that again. God, the Father, the one that sits high and lives low, the God of the universe, the one that made heaven and earth. He expects a return on his investment in our lives. And stewardship is the way God gets such a return. Brothers and sisters in Christ, all those that are listening in and those that will be listening in later, songs. 24 and verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Biblical stewardship extends to set you up as a child of God for your ultimate retirement in heaven, which will be a lot longer than your retirement here on earth. Child of God, when you invest in advancing God's kingdom here on earth, what you are doing is thinking with a future-oriented mindset. You see, God expects a return on his investment. And stewardship is the way God gets such a return. Here we see in Matthew 6, verse 20, it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through, nor steal. 
Because in Matthew 6, 21, in continuation of what I just said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When you and I and every believer of Christ have invested our time, talent, and, tr- and treasure in the eternal, our investment has a divine return. Yes, because God will make sure that we get what is rightfully due us. So we must invest in what he has given us to be a good steward. You must not waste time of what has been given to you and invest it and show a return for it. You see, we have to understand as born-again believers, God has made an investment in our lives. He has saved us. He has forgiven us. He has placed his Holy Spirit within us to lead, guide, and direct us. So to be a good steward, we must not waste what he has given to us. in his hand, in his care, and in return, have an investment, a return of divine honor. See, God is a God of honor. Yes, we are given resources according to our individual abilities. So different. Yes, we are. It is a fact that some people are more talented than others. However, we are responsible for those things God has given us. And God, in return, he expects a profit. That means that God has an expectation of receiving more than what he has given us initially. God expects us to take what he has given us and make a profit out of it. I'm talking about P-R-O-F-I-T. You know, let me just say this for a second. Coming back to the matter. Prophet is people, we take our money and while making the negotiation, the teller or the banker will let us know how much interest we should accumulate through a period of time. So when that time is up, and we go to receive on what we had invested, we are expecting interest to accumulate on what we put in in the natural. Am I right about it? So when we talk about spiritual investment, when we talk about putting it in God's hands, and what God has invested in our lives, he expects us to go for it and multiply, duplicate what has been invested in our lives. So believers of Christ, we must spend money on things that increase value. So the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. But money itself is not evil. Money itself is not evil, but we can take money 
and do evil things with it. So that's why when we, when God bless us, we give a certain portion back to him, which is right to you here. And then he allow us the rest to take care of what is needed for us to live on a daily basis. But God, in turn, expects us to do things decent and in order. So what he invests in us, he expects a return by us being good stewards of what God has given us. So invest what you have been given. In the passages of scriptures that I read, in Matthew 25, 14, verses 14 through 29. If you notice, two of the three individuals that started trading, there was two of the three. There was three individuals that were given a certain amount of talent, a certain amount of money to invest in order that interest could be accumulated. Well, two of them traded with what they had been given. They started what we would call in the natural. They started willing and dealing. In other words, they were looking for a good deal. So they didn't sit on their most holy than thou. No, they went and invest in what the master gave them. Sadly, the third person made no effort to invest in what he had been given. And instead, he buried it. He placed what God had given him into the wrong soil. And that is why it did not grow. People of God, believers in Christ, we have to be careful of what song we place our investment in. And what I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about your time, your talent that God has given. All of every believer at the time when you gave your life to Christ, we was given a gift, at least one. And it's not for us to just take it and get big-headed about it. It's not for us just to take it and sit on it. No, it's for us to invest it into the kingdom of God that it may grow. You see, God won't, God just like lazy people. He just like the fact that we get selfish. Our motive is not right. But if our motive is to always look on to the hills, look on, look up, look on to the hills from which come our help, our motive should be to please God in everything we say and do and things that will accumulate and multiply for the kingdom of God, that it may grow and increase may come about. So God expects a return on his investment, and stewardship is the way he gets such a return. Let's take this list. Any organization should experience growth and increase in influence and market share. That is how we should see the church as a whole. You see, the church is supposed to be a living organism that keep evolving over and over again, that keep multiplying and duplicating what Christianity is all about. 
when we get ourselves in trouble as people of God, we started getting in competition with one another instead of helping one another, instead of working in unity, because there's strength and there's power in numbers. And that's where strength comes in. You see, not every church should necessarily become a mega church. But every church, whether small or big, should grow for God's glory. Any church or any Christian organization should have a purpose, and that is to reach the lost for Jesus at any cost. And that is to influence and impact the lives of people. Every church should strive towards success, experience growth, and should increase in profit, and should increase in, in its influence for the glory of God. Sometimes to all something to always remember that each and every person on earth today should be accountable to somebody. That is the way we we were created. And this is how God's kingdom is designed to work. We are ultimately accountable to God. People who are not accountable usually causes trouble. Yes? God is not the author of confusion, but he is a God of honor. He has set the family in order. He has set his church in order. And we, as people of God, should strive to do things God's way. And that is to keep the purpose in order, which pleases him. See, the Bible says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. And them that come to God must believe that he is who he say he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, again, we as people of God, those that are listening in today, Invest what you have been given because God expects a return on his investment. And stewardship is the way God gets such a return. Yes? Notice that the master that gave the talent to the three in the ritual, he blessed the profitable servant and their level of profitability. Profitability. The most profitable was blessed the most. God will bless you 